If you're interested in our future events, follow us on Instagram at Millie underscore group for updates. So here's how today's panel is going to look. We have some questions pre prepared already, but you can always submit your own questions for the Q&A in the chat bar. The first 45 minutes or so, we'll go through the prepared questions. And after that, we'll let our panelists answer your questions. I encourage you all to ask any questions, whether they are general questions for everyone, or you could direct it to a specific panelist. Either is fine, and I'm sure they will be more than willing to help you get the right answer. Today, we have two amazing panelists, and we will hear about them and their experiences. All right, so let's get started. So could each of the panelists please introduce themselves? Please tell us your name, the city you are currently in and from, and one fun fact about yourself. We can start with Giselle. Hi there, my name is Giselle, and I'm currently studying in UAL LCC um, on advertising, uh, BA year two, and I'm currently in London, but I'm from Hong Kong. Uh, yeah, and a fun fact about me is that I used to study animation, but then in the middle, I found that animation isn't really my path, so I decided to change to advertising. Hi everyone, nice to meet you. My name is Hai Chen and I have just graduated from uh, UAL LCC Social Innovation and Sustainable Future Design. Um, currently I'm in Berlin because it's not travel time. And one fun fact will be um, I have a very sensitive nose so I can distinguish um, the brand Lush uh, wherever I am uh, in the same street with it. Oh, I forgot to say I'm from Guangzhou, um, the southern part city of China. Thank you. Thank you so much for telling us a little bit about yourselves and those interesting fun facts. So moving on, let's start with the questions. Why did you apply to UAL? Was it your dream university? Were there other options? And if there were, why did you choose UAL over others? Giselle? Well, I applied to UAL because UAL has been my always first choice of uni. Um, since I was in Hong Kong, at first I was planning to study SCAD, but then um, SCAD is just closes down in Hong Kong. And then I have been looking into Sydney Uni as well. Um, however, because my bigger brother used to study in London as well, and I've been to London, I quite like the atmosphere. It's more artistic. Um, country, so in a city as well. So yeah, that's why I chose UAL. For me, at the beginning, it was only because of the ranking, as it ranked top two among the world, and um, and I also enjoyed the artistic atmosphere in London. That's why I chose it. And at that time, my other choices were like um, uh, Hong Kong Poly U and also Glasgow um, School of Art. Yeah, but after that, I kind of decided to choose London. All right, that was great. Um, did you know anyone else who attended uh, UAL before you applied? And if so, were they um, a factor that made you apply to UAL? Um, for me, I didn't know anyone who studied in UAL, uh, but yeah, I know a lot of my friends who studied in other school in US. However, I'm real. I'm not really into US, so yeah, I didn't. Um, for me, I also didn't have many friends or seniors from UAL, but I did have a tutor. Uh, who have graduated from UAL like maybe 20 years ago. Yeah, and he showed us how UAL students learn and I got very interested in that. Interesting. Okay, so how did you decide what you wanted to study at university? It was kind of struggle for me because there you have a lot of courses and a lot of campus and different majors. So I had to really to push in and ask for a friend's opinion, family's opinion, and all people beside me and also look through um, all the course syllabus for me to decide. But 
at the end, I thought that maybe advertising would be easier for me to really find a job, especially in Hong Kong when I graduated. So yeah, I went to advertising. Um, for me, because it's a postgraduate um, study, um, I chose it because um, it's kind of a summary of all of my interests and my bachelor degree. So um, it's kind of um, to continue what I love and what I enjoy. That was really interesting. Uh, what did you, oh, sorry, what was the prep like for you to get into UAL? Um, like how was, did you have to prepare a portfolio? Did you have to go through an interview process? Could you talk a little bit more about that? For me, applying for advertising, I don't have to prepare for any portfolio or um, any interview. It's just that as long as your high school grade are good enough and meet the requirement, then I guess you're just in then. That's, that's actually quite fun to know for me because uh, I need the portfolio and also an interview, but, but also maybe because it's a postgraduate. So uh, I think I spent 10 months to prepare my portfolio at that time. And then I also uh, searched for some interview tips before my interview. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, what did you study prior to university to get into your field or major? And so, like, did you always know what you wanted to do? I used to study um, IB um, arts. And I used to take, a, like, a foundation year in SCAD Uni, a Savannah College. Um, and then... Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was just doing the basic foundations, drawing, design and stuff. So it was really until uni that I really know what my path, what I wanted my path to be like. Um, for me, because uh, it's, um, because my master is very related to my interest. So I would say I know what I want to do um, before my Choice. Moving on to questions about academics, what is your favorite part of your degree and what would you tell high school students hoping to pursue this degree? My favorite part of the degree is that I get to you do all sort kind of things, for example, uh, photo shooting, web page design, audio and podcasting. Um, uh yeah all, all sorts of things uh doing essay writing uh and presentations as well so i guess it would be really useful for in the future even when you're working because these could not these could also be your interests as well so yeah i guess ul could really help me to develop my interests um, for me, it will be more about the design thinking and workshop planning because our course um, really emphasizes like workshopping and communicating with different people. So it's quite interesting to know how to do a very detailed and logical research and then turn this into the design. Thank you so much for those answers. Uh, so what makes the experience at UAL unique compared to other universities? Um, for me, what makes UAL different is that they have a lot of workshops provided, for example, uh, book arts, screen printing and stuff. We could, in, as a student in UAL, you could just enjoy all the equipment, all the facilities as long as you're a student. So I guess that really makes a difference. I really have the same answer. And and especially, I think especially for um, the London College of Communication, it really has anything you need if you want to print something. And I also want to add the library, it's also amazing.
That's really great to hear that the university offers a lot to the students. So how is your course structured each year and how are your courses assessed? For my advertising school uh, course, I have free semester each year. And then especially for year two, which I'm doing now, uh, we'll have an optional course in the end of the semester. The, I mean, like the, the third year of the semester where I get to choose from all sorts of things. For example, once again, what page design, podcasting, uh, learn about influencer or data collection and stuff. So, yeah. Um, for us, it's a 15 month project. So it has been divided into five units. And for the unit one and two, it's more like to teach you how to do the um, design research, like creative ways of workshopping, things like that, and then how to turn this into an outcome. And for unit three, we have a cooperation project cooperated with several organizations and, and companies to conduct a community engagement design together. And then for unit four, it's a speculative design. So like to design something for the future work. And then unit five was like um, how to um, conclude all the things you, you have learned and then um, make some real change to, the, to your community or to the society. Yeah. It's really interesting to hear how different the structures are for each course. Continuing with that, uh, how, what was, what has your experience with your classes and professors been? Um, for my course, especially it's more on the more creative side. My professors are quite fun. Um, they like to chat with us, um, especially when we're doing a practical like drawing or designing. They just like to make fun of us. We chat together. And then they provide us more ideas. Um, yeah, so I really like the relationship between students and professors in my course. For me, it's quite similar. Um, we, I, I have to say we are like not only professors and students, but more like friends. Um, we went to like parties and pubs together and um, also we discussed um, something related to life together, yeah. It's really nice to hear how students and professors don't have that usual like gap between them. It's really nice. Um, so describe the atmosphere and dynamic between peers and classmates in general. So do you have like group projects or in collaborative learning or do you mainly do independent learning? For advertising, it's mainly collaborative learning. It's a lot of group work, a lot of presentations. Um, as I think for advertising, the course, you really need to work in groups and collaborate with people into thinking of, for example, a poster design or into like coll collecting uh, data from one big company. So you can't really like do that individually. So. For my course, it's mainly collaborative learning. Mm -hmm. For our course, it's more like a cooperation. So, um, but only, so like I said, we have five units and only in unit one and two, it was individual learning. But for the other three units, you are very welcome to make a group and do projects together. Thank you. Could you describe a typical day in your life as a student at UAL and the structure of your classes? For my class, it's usually, for example, 9 a.m. in the morning for lecture, usually an hour. And then we'll have kind of like a lunch break where I just sit with my friends. Probably sometimes we play card games and then we get to grab lunch and then we go to class together. That's very cute um, for us. Um, usually um, the dates are quite different um, among each unit. 
So for example, in unit one, we uh, I will take one day of our unit one as an example. So we start the course at 10 and then finish the morning course at 1 p.m. And then um, some of our classmates will went to the canteen together to share their lunch. And then at two, we will continue our afternoon course until six, yeah. oh, sorry, five. Thank you. Is there anything special about your course at UAL compared to other art universities? Like for example, do you get extra help outside of class? Do you have options to do a placement or study abroad and other special facilities? Oh yeah, we do have a uh, option to study abroad. Um, we get to choose between, I think Columbia and Hong Kong, uh, Poly U. Um, and then we also get to have a placement year, which we call DPS. After year two, you'll have a year um, you can just like where you can just focus on your internship, gaining CV experience. That's very nice to know. Um, for us, I think uh, we don't have those um, things because it's uh, only a 15 month um, master. Yeah. Moving on to questions about the environment um, of the university. What is your favorite part and least favorite part about your university experience? Are there any events or societies that you could join? The favorite part for me, it's definitely the facilities provided. And for the least favorite, I think is that some societies, they don't really make much events which it is quite an unfortunate, uh, which because I really wanted to social with everybody and meet new friends, but then, yeah, I hope they can improve on this. Um, for me, the best part are still the same, the facilities, and I will still at the library. And I would say the least part is, um, though the facilities are really amazing, but it's a little bit hard for you to get a slot. So it's like usually um, our classmates set an alarm to get a slot, yeah. It sounds like UAL has really nice facilities. <laughs> Could you provide insights into the undergraduate housing options at UAL? And what are some of the benefits of living on campus versus off campus? I have always been living in accommodation, uh, which is near my school. So that is really a great advantage for me because I just get to, it's a walking distance to school, which means that, um, for example, because my class is only three days per week. And for example, if I want to book a workshop, um, which is not my school day, um, I could just like walk in and I don't have to travel so far. So that's really an advantage advantage for me living in accommodation I didn't get the uh, accommodations first so I um, so I ran the social housing for myself but I have visited some of my friends um, uni accommodation and I think it's quite nice like like Giselle said it's very close to the uni and you can use the facilities very easily and I think it's been, uh, I think it will save you some money for commuting. I think living um, close to campus is really, is a really good advantage. Um, I think this question mostly applies to Giselle because she lives on like a, a combination from the school. So is the combination catered or self catered? And like, are there different options suitable for all dietary requirements? In my accommodation, they have a lot um, our like the crews here, they have provided a lot of help. For example, uh, if any facilities are broken, they would like fix it after you email that or walk into the front desk. Or um, for example, if you, for example, you, you're a disabled person um, which needed help, um, Thailand, I mean, my for my accommodation would also really help into um, any things you need for your room. Yep. 
sounds good. Um, are there many international students on your course or in your accommodation? Uh, to be honest, I don't really know because I'm not living in a shared kitchen, so I don't really interact with other people in my accommodation. So, yeah. Um, how about you, Haichin? Are there a lot of international students in your course? Um, yes. Um, I think the majority of our course are international students. I mean, the international include European and North America, South America, like that. And I do think this creates a very inclusive atmosphere to the course. Where is your favorite place to study at UAL and your favorite place to relax? My favorite place to relax is the cafeteria as um, they have a large table because in the library, it's usually you have to keep quiet. So for me and my friends, I like to play in cafeteria where we could like just talk loudly, chat and yeah. Um, for me, my favorite place to study is the silent zone of the library because I cannot stand with any noise when I'm doing some serious things. And for the relaxing space will be the, the big sofa in my previous classroom. So people usually sleep on that sofa. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, do... The study spaces at UAL differ depending on your course or like, is it available to everyone? Uh, I guess it's available to everyone as, as long as you book through our school website, which is called The Orb. Um, for example, if you need to do books, art or anything, you need a room and materials, you could always book online and it doesn't differ depending on your course. I think most of the facilities um, are open to everyone, but I'm not sure if some specific um, rooms are um, really uh, open to everyone. For example, like the uh, photography, special dark room, things like that. Okay, that was great. Uh, moving on to questions on extracurriculars and career opportunities. What clubs or societies are you involved in on campus? I have joined a magazine uh, society where we get to visit galleries and we get to uh, make our own magazine. However, I didn't join the gallery because I was working. But then we also have like a group meeting. I think it's once per month or so. So we got to gather together and then discuss on magazine questions and problems. For me, I only joined a frisbee club, but I didn't um, get get a chance to join many um, trainings and tournaments. Mm -hmm. The magazine club sounds really fun. <laughs> um, so did you try any new sports at university? And if so, why did you choose them? Uh, I did tried any sport because I'm not really a sporty person but um, I guess I would want to if I have extra time. Um, for me I tried uh, frisbee and baseball for the first time because two of my um, classmates really um, into the two uh, sports separately so um, sometimes they will bring the frisbee or the baseball to the uni and then we will play that in the park near the uni. Yeah. That sounds really fun, Haishin. Uh, so how do you balance studies and extracurricular activities? Uh, for my study, as I only go in campus for three days, I actually have a lot of spare time for doing extracurriculum. So 
I guess that would be also kind of like a way where you can balance like if you're for example you're doing like lecture or seminar in one day where you can do extracurriculum or like any sports or activity in another day. For me, um, I also don't have a very hard workload only for my class, but we did have several different readings and I also um, spent many time in different galleries and museums. So the way I used um, was to making plans. So I have a monthly plan, weekly plan and daily plan. So they kind of control my schedule to, to, to keep the balance here. I think keeping a plan is makes you definitely like more organized so you can balance your time. Are there any volunteering or internship opportunities at your university? Well, I only know there's internship chance if you do DPS, um, the placement year, but I don't think you do have for year one and year two for now. For our side, also don't think we have that kind of um, volunteer or internship job, but I think we do have some vacancies that the students can apply. Could you talk more about the placement year, like DPS? Like, is that like a, part, a requirement to do that or is it optional? For DPS, it is optional because uh, for my course, I, you need three years to graduate. Um, but if you're doing DPS, you do an extra year, which you also have to be paid for um, for doing it. But then it would be cheaper than the original school fee. Thank you so much. Um, what are the best ways to make friends at your university? I would say definitely do more workshops, join more society. Um, cause everyone in who studies in UAL are really friendly, um, and people who do workshops and society really, I guess, their aim is also to meet people and broader their social group. So yeah, that's what I would do if I really wanted to meet more people. I'm thinking of the same thing, and I also want to add that you just need to be brave to reach to people because usually people are very friendly and welcome to talk. Um, since I think a lot of the students that are watching are international students, could you speak more about the global engagement opportunities at UAL, like the study abroad and international pro exchange programs? If you could dive deeper into that. For the exchange program, you'll have to apply it on I think year one, because you'll be doing an exchange in year two from September to Christmas, uh, which is December. Um, and then for applying for exchange year, you have to sign up a form and then They'll have a lot of questions and asking why you want to. And as long as the teacher approved, then you could just do an exchange semester. Uh, however, oh, and this goal will also help you find accommodation as well. Um, for like, yeah, for example, in Hong Kong, PolyU, they will have PolyU accommodation as well, where you can get to live in, so you don't really have to struggle in finding place to live in the area which you wanted to exchange. Do you think the selection for the exchange program is competitive, or is it not so competitive? To be honest, for my course, it isn't really competitive as there aren't much choices. So I guess the only people I, the only one I know uh, that study that went exchange year out of my whole year is just like having two or one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, next question. Are there any networking events, alumni panels, or industry connections that UAL facilitates for graduate students to explore potential career paths and make professional connections? Well, I'm not sure about graduate student, but they do have a lot of lecture activities where you can join for, according to your course, for example, like film and stuff, they would invite a lot of uh, people, industry, like people who was popular in the industry, and they'll just invite them in for a lecture and a talk, and students will get to answer questions as well. Plus, we do have some industrial talk. Um, I, I, I didn't join many hosted by the uni, but um, our course offered some of the um, industrial talk nights and socials like that. Um, what Are there any career services available to help undergraduates with their professional development at UAL? Um, well, for now, we're doing a project about um, making our LinkedIn better, improving our LinkedIn and our CV. So I guess that would kind of help for future career paths. So, yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, if you could change one thing about your... Oh, sorry. Uh, hi, Shen. Oh, I was just about to say, um, I think for the postgraduate, we can use the um, career center and their services provided by the unit. Uh, could you more talk more about like what they help you with? I haven't tried yet, but I do plan to try maybe in January. So it's like you can push a slot to ask to reach to the help center and then they can help you with like um, editing your CV, maybe LinkedIn page and then portfolio and maybe some more suggestions like that. And I think it, I think the service um, can last um, one year or two year after your graduation. Um, that sounds really good. Okay, uh, moving on. If you could change one thing about your university, what would you change? I would want to change the decoration of the building. To be honest, I would want uh, my campus to be renewed and to be prettier. But I know that they are building a new LCC campus nearby. So hopefully, well, well, actually, no, I don't get to use it. But hopefully for your freshers, they get to use it. For me, I want to change the salary of our professors um, because they are, yeah, because like um, they, they were doing a strike. So at that time we asked them about the salaries and also because our course is really centered um, on the problems like eco-social problems. So, so we really care about them. So we really want to, uh, so we really want to, you need to pay them more because they're worth it. Yeah. Okay. How have you grown as a person since studying at UAL? Um, since primary school, I have been doing lots of art and design stuff. And I found that that's the only, well, not only the only subject, but that's like the subject that most interests me. So I've started to develop slowly um starting from primary and then my IGCSC and then my IB and then until now sorry you what was your question about how did the uni change my path or how did I do uh, that when I was young? Uh it can be about just how you've grown as a person, maybe it could be from your childhood or just before you entered UAL and how you are now that after you've graduated. Oh, okay. How cool. the university impacted you? Uh-huh. Um, so for me, I think um, 
the uni has made me to become a person with a strong empathy. So it's like I can now um, understand people's situation and then um, bring more care and love towards them. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, what were some of your biggest worries when you first began your degree? And looking back now, how did you address some of those concerns? I was worrying about not being able to meet friends um, and having to like go home alone, just be lonely. But then that didn't really happen because I guess in UAL, it's just like a really friendly atmosphere where you just get to it's really easy to meet friends and just have lunch together and play together for me i was also worrying about making if i can make any friends here and um, if my english is okay for me to communicate and also um yeah that two things. But after I um, entered here, I also found people are really friendly and easygoing. It all sounds really great. Uh, what things do you feel like you still need to work on? I feel like I really need to work on my work experience, which I had been trying my best throughout these two years. And I really want to find an internship for during summer which I could really improve on my CV and I could go towards my career path. For me the thing I need to work more are um, resistance and the ability to take more actions instead of thinking. Yes. So it's like um, I, I want myself to be um, not easily give up and also um, um, what's that word again? Yeah, basically that's the thing. Okay, that all sounds great. Uh, so what opportunities do you feel will be more available to you because you got your degree from UAL? Mm, I think that as a student studying in UAL, there would be a bigger chance of being uh, accepted by looking through my portfolio as UAL is kind of like the top two. And I'm not sure, is it in London or? Yeah. So I guess that would kind of give me an opportunity, but definitely I had to work harder on gaining more experience and portfolio as well. I also have the same feeling. Um, um, I think um, not only UAL, but also my course kind of provided me some, um, maybe some knowledge about some jobs that I didn't know before. For example, like some uh, community engagement job or the um, public education job in some galleries and museums and also some jobs, some coordinator job in the um, non-profit organizations, things like that. Uh, what is one piece of advice you would give your to yourself during your first few months of studying at UAL? I would really tell them to use the facility, enjoy everything you have um, as a student in UAL because they really provide you a lot of things in there. My answer is just the same. I don't need to change a word. Yeah, I think from what you guys said, I think the facilities at UAL must be really amazing. So what is the biggest misconception about your university and do you think it's true? Um, there is a really big misconception in towards the different campus we have. People usually say that, oh, um, CSM is the best. But then, to be honest, it isn't. Because every campus, it depends on, like, what course are you studying? Like, if I'm studying advertising, I wouldn't be able to go to CSM because I'm not doing, like, drawing or anything. 
like I wouldn't be going if you're studying to fashion, you wouldn't be doing in LCC because it's just different and we have different facilities. So it isn't true. I was about to say the same thing. I mean, um, yeah, some misconception is CSM is the best, but, but they don't have the printing um, materials and facilities. So that was the end of the pre-prepared questions. We have one student question and I'll ask the question right now. So how does the assessment to project ratio look like and how are they graded? For my course, I think for every year, I mean, until now I have free assignment and for, in my first year, the assignments are usually being marked by pass or fail. Um, only a few that is marked by like A, B, C, D. And then now it's mainly marked by letters um, like A, B, C, D and percentage as well. And for example, in one project uh, um, will be marked, for example, 30% for our presentation and then 20% for individual project. But yeah, every assignment mark is being marked differently. So it depends on your course and the syllabus as well. For us, we can get the assessment um, for each unit. And um, before each unit, our tutors will go through the assessment um, criteria. And usually it includes several aspects like knowledge, process, and things like that. So it's like how you show you have learned this design thinking and how you turn them into your project. So we have a few minutes left. Uh, I would like to ask a few more questions. Uh, I know a few friends of mine that are worried about portfolio preparation and interview. So I know that Haichin did that. So if like you could talk more about what you prepared, like for your portfolio and how you did all of that? So for me, I prepared, I think it was five projects in my portfolio for my postgraduate. And I can also share my Behance page if you want to see the details of it. So um, basically it's just a project that I am interested into and they can include many aspects and uh, I think the most important thing is to know um, the like like the course you are applying to. For example, I was applying for the social innovation and sustainable future design. So I need to include the projects that are related to social innovation, for example, social justice and health and care and also eco-friendly projects. Thank you so much. Um, and this question is for both Giselle and Haichin. Uh, did you guys have to write a personal statement? Because um, I know for a lot of universities in like the UK, like through UCAS, you have to write a personal statement. Did you guys have to do that? To be honest, I don't really remember. I think I did. But then because I applied for UCAS, uh, it was quite straightforward. So. Yeah, I think you do have to. I also wrote a personal statement for it. And basically it's just, um, it just included uh, who you are, like some self-introduction and why you chose this course. Like um, why, why you, and also why you think you can or you should be here. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any tips on writing your personal statement? like? Do you think it's better to focus more on yourself as a person or more on like why you should be accepted to AO and like why this course is a match for you? I would say it's a mixture of everything. Uh, I think you'll mostly you'll have to write about why you want to apply to this course and what interests you, um, how did you develop your interests and stuff. So just write about everything that you think would be interesting and good for um, the uni to know. 
I have the same answer, and I also want to add, like, maybe you can say something like what you can bring to this course. For example, maybe your special background or a special degree or special interest, things like that. Hi, thank you all so much. Um, and one last question for today. Uh, after knowing all of the information we talked about today, what is the one piece of advice you would give to your high school self? Mm, calm down, don't stress that much because everything would soon, would definitely would be, your path is your path. You don't have to be stressed about it or anymore or anything. Just try your best. Um, I would say spend more time on the things you love. Like just the things you love instead of other suggestions like that. Thank you so much to both of you. Those were like very good advice. I think a lot of high school students can relate about not being able to like calm down and they're really worried about everything, especially if in like their final year. And I think they should just learn to be more appreciative of like what they have and just live life. So we are at the end of our panel today, but thank you so much to our panelists for spending the time with us today and wonderful insight into the University of the Arts London, what the key highlights are, as well as some insight into the life of a university student. So thank you so much for being so op open and honest. Thank you also to the viewers. I'm sure you can all agree that our amazing panelists have done a fantastic job and provided some crucial information to guide decision-making around your next steps. Once again, if you need any help with university and career guidance, do check out our website and Instagram, and you can contact all of our panelists via LinkedIn to get help with any questions you may have. All right, so thank you so much once again.